Hi, it's Michael Senoff with Michael Senoff's HardToFindSeminars.com. The title of this interview is called Genetic Scientists Uncover the Final End to All Diets. Thanks to a powerful new diet designed to work with your unique body chemistry, Dr. Peter J. Dadamo, physician and author of the best-selling diet book, Eat Right for Your Type, has made his amazing diet program even better. His new book, Change Your Genetic Destiny, builds on his original program Program by incorporating groundbreaking research from the field of genetics. In this audio interview, Dr. Dadamo explains his remarkable new approach to achieving optimal health. Here's what you're going to learn in this interview. You'll learn the shocking reason why one-size-fits-all diets don't work. You'll learn the four ways that your blood type affects your health. You'll learn revolutionary insight into how your genes affect your health, how to identify your unique genetic type. You'll learn why you're not doomed to repeat your family's health history. You'll learn how you may be damaging your body without even knowing it. You'll learn why you should take control of your health right now. Your body is unique. Stop trying to follow the latest diet trends because they seem to be working for others. Dr. Dadamo has designed a scientifically based diet that's designed to work for you because it addresses your body's unique needs. Now listen in and you'll learn the secrets to better health. Now let's get going. Hi, this is Chris Costello, and I've teamed up with Michael Senoff to bring you the world's best wellness-related interviews. So if you know anyone struggling with their weight, with cancer, diabetes, ADHD, autism, heart disease, or other health challenges, please send them to Michael Senoff's HardToFindSeminars.com. So, Dr. Dadamo, thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure, Chris. So, you're the author of Change Your Genetic Destiny and also Eat Right for Your Type and very interesting books talking about blood type and some really fascinating subject. Actually, I have studied it for a very long time. Certainly, my first book now, out almost 15 years, still top of the charts on Amazon in terms of health. But, yeah, my father worked on it for a period of time before I did, so... We've been in this area for probably the better part of half a century. So you're actually a naturopathic doctor. Now, what's the difference between a naturopath and just kind of your regular physician? Well, I mean, it's a small profession that is licensed to provide the same level of primary care. We have a focus on more lifestyle of things like nutrition. We're skilled in a lot of traditional medicine. So, for instance, naturopaths and naturopaths tend to be very versed in things like botanical medicines and herbs and vitamins and things like that. So I'd summarize it by saying it's a healing art that basically has its prime focus, health promotion, disease prevention, wellness-based approach, which is to say that there's nothing wrong with the other approach. It's just more of a disease-based approach. And we try to have people use as little of the other system as possible. So it's kind of science-based. I mean, so most of the stuff that we do would make perfect sense to any scientist. We go through inordinate efforts to try to keep the person healthy and then, you know, hopefully minimize the use of the other system by virtue of teaching them things that they can do themselves, like eat right and stuff like that. Well, the link between blood type and diet is actually something my dad worked on prior to my getting interested in it. And so, as I said before, he spent the greater part of the 1950s and 60s trying to figure out why some people did better on one type of diet and other people did better on another type of diet. And at the time, there really wasn't many other genes you could look at. I mean, you know, they didn't have genetic testing to the degree they have now. So one of the few genes you could test for relatively easily was blood type. It's interesting that he sort of went on that premise because he did come up with an observation that really is quite powerful even to this day, that roughly 40% of the population should be on a more limited carbohydrate, high-protein diet. And another 40% of the population would be better suited to be on a Mediterranean or more plant-based diet complex carbohydrates, and these are the eggs. So right off the bat, you've got something along the lines of 85% of the population that you can make a very powerful yet very simple distinction about. Who goes this way, who goes that? The interesting thing is, of course, to this day, how that duality exists on the diet bookshelf between those two basic approaches. And yet in each one of those books that are out there, be they Atkins or the Ornish diet, you know, they have a certain exclusivity that the Ornish basically would put everybody on a low-fat diet, Atkins basically low-carb, high-protein. And yet, you know, they have people who are adherents and believers and detractors. And so you know that each one is representing a percentage of the truth. So maybe the major breakthrough was simply to be able to say that most approaches are going to be valuable, but you need to study who that approach would be the most beneficial for. And it turns out that blood type is a big influence on it. Yeah, medicine is having a hard time with personalization in general. The 
because like I said before, it's largely medicine is a disease care system. So in essence, you're waiting until the person has a pathology. And there's very little about personalization you need to worry about when a person has high blood pressure or a person has high cholesterol, cardiovascular problems. The idea of personalization is that you're trying to come up with the way that you can optimize a person's habits, the choices that they make, to get them a better than average level of wellness so that basically they're that much more suited to. So it's a whole lot more about food on a personalized aspect than it is about medicine in general. I'll try to break it down into a couple of small little niblets so that people can sort of get a feel for the basis of what drives the theory. First is the notion that our blood type is limited to our blood, which is not true. So you should understand that the thing that makes us have blood type A or blood type O is a chemical that's found all through our body. It's found actually more in your digestive tract than it is in your blood. So the thing that makes me blood type A is actually a chemical that's found throughout my digestive tract. And so much of how we immunologically, how our immune system deals with the food that we intake is related to dynamics about things like how it relates to the blood type chemicals in our digestive tract. And many foods contain proteins that actually react directly with these blood type chemicals in our digestive tract and can cause all sorts of difficulties. So the third way that blood type influences diet is actually the physical manifestation of your blood type influences certain relationships with food. And if a person has a different blood type, these foods would react perhaps in a different way or not react at all. I'll give you a perfect example. I'm going to send them blood type A. Now, if I was to just eat up a plate of lima beans and eat that, you could observe, believe it or not, damage occurring to my intestinal tract. And if some of it got into my bloodstream, my cells of my blood would actually start to clump up. Now, if you gave that plate of lima beans to my wife, who's type O, nothing at all would happen because the clumping is related to proteins in that food that only clump certain chemicals of a certain blood type. And if you don't have that blood type, you're left completely alone. Now, what happens when you clump up, right? Well, you get more inflammation. It puts the stress on your kidneys. It causes damage to your intestinal tract. It slows down your metabolism. So the first link between blood type and diet is that we consume many of them, interact directly with our body by interacting with our blood type chemicals in our digestive tract directly. The second link is that blood type seems to control levels of certain types of fluids that we make in our digestive tract. For instance, it's known that blood type O, since the 1950s, they've known that this blood type has more ulcers than the other blood type. They know that blood type A gets a certain type of anemia that's only seen in when people don't make enough acid in them. So here you have one blood type that makes a lot of acid in their stomach and one blood type that gets a type of anemia that you only get when you don't make acid in your stomach. So you can imagine who'd be better on the protein diet will be the person probably with the acid levels that are pretty high. And the person who's going to mess up the protein is going to be the person who can't make a lot of acid in their stomach. So the analogy is a lot like automobiles. If you buy an economy car and put in high octane gasoline, it'll run okay for a while, but really the engine isn't designed for that type of gasoline. Now if you buy a Porsche and put in economy gasoline, it will run okay for a while, but the engine really is designed to have a different type. And people are like this as well. So the single thing that you're doing, second theory, is that you're giving the person a diet that's in alignment with their capacities digestively that seems to be linked to the genetics of their blood type. There's countless tens of thousands of people who have actually seen myself or my father, but there's probably about five million people who bought that book. Hi, it's Michael Sinoff with HardToFindSeminars.com. Thanks for watching this video. You know, many of my interviews last 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, sometimes even up to two and a half hours long. They're actual mini seminars, and you've just listened to a short sample of just one of over 117 hours of exciting, hard-hitting, mind-blowing interviews on how to make money in direct mail, advertising, copywriting. I assure you, there is not a resource anywhere on the internet or on the planet that comes close to the free information I provide at hardtofindseminars.com. So go right now to hardtofindseminars.com and you'll have free access to 117 hours of audio interviews with typed word-for-word -word downloadable transcripts and downloadable MP3 files. Please browse some more of the videos or go right directly to hardtofindseminars.com. Thanks for watching.